Hey guys, I've done a lot on the Swiss Yen, so here is another post. Wherever you're watching this, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and get my free training underneath this video. It's right there. It'll change your trading a lot. So, well, we've got a lot to talk about, haven't we, with the Swiss Yen. You know and I know that it's come up and up and up and up and up for a significant period of time. Just about the time we got to 2020, when it was sitting more or less around uh, 1.095, um, we've now come all the way up, all the way up here to 167. Now, it's important to note early on that that move has taken you uh, three years and how many months? Nine months. So the start of 2020 to almost the end or the third quarter onwards from um, 2023. Uh, that's a long period of time. I know it's moved a long way, but it is a long period of time. And you know, you're 50 plus percent, or you can measure it quite well with this tool. Um, the move has taken you all the way up 56%, 56.65% uh, or however much. Now, there's a way to deal with these markets, as many of you know who follow me or perhaps are in my academy, we've hedged the whole way to maintain ourselves within this 56% move, keep, us, keep our heads above water. But now you are in an area of an extreme market and it's an extreme market because if you go on your 12 monthly you can see it's the highest it's ever been since 1979 and beyond so this was really the standard for entries um short or what would be a target for a high price what people were looking at and saying well We've seen the price there before. When it came there before, it fell dramatically. So your bias might have been short at this point, as it was for me and for many others. And what you can see now is the market is still pushing up. Now, this is why I said to trade very, very light sizes and space your trades out. If you've got a really bullish market, an endless rallying market, it's steaming off from these key moving averages. You can see we haven't hit the closest moving average since the end of the financial crisis. Okay, which says a lot, we've just gone up and down and up. There isn't a down yet. Um, but really the basis of this video is to how to handle the market before you get that down move. So first of all, if you were shorting up here, really your next short should be held off a long way. Okay, because you don't know how far this market's gonna go and you've already seen these massive green candles beforehand. Okay, so you know the market is rushing and rushing and rushing, you know it's rallying, you know more people are piling into the long side, and there really isn't many people liquidating their shorts. Now, that's because the yen is getting weaker, and you've seen a bit in the news lately about the Bank of Japan changing uh, monetary policy or their approach, perhaps intervening in the market, because they don't want the currency to be extremely cheap. They like it cheap, there's massive exports from Japan, that's why they like it cheap. Because obviously, if you do a lot of exports, it's better to have a cheaper currency, okay? Um, and you can see that that is why they take that approach. Now, there is a point where that becomes not so good for them, and that's when the market often comes down. That's why people talk so much about uh, Bank of Japan intervention. So you've had your up, you've had your down, you've had your up, but there isn't a retracement yet, is there? And really, I think at least you'll come in line with this for your support but more so in the long term, you'll get here. Now, it's important to note that I'm using a 12 monthly chart. And therefore, this is going to be a trade that takes probably a fair amount of time. If I swap to the monthly, again, you can just see numerous up candles, but you do have ch a chance to get long on the dips. And you should have done that for a significant period of time. Okay, and that's what I teach members to do to sustain themselves, because you could have hedged long all the way up and collected those gains and spaced out those shorts much further apart, and then the longs you would take for the months where you went sideways, because if you look at things like September 22 to all the way to March 23, there was just more or less sideways movement. You could have traded that in and out, in and out, and in and out, and made enough money to eradicate your shorts that were wrong before, okay? And you've got something similar here. There's a few months of being sideways, and I imagine you'll probably get the same at some point in the future. But again, if you look at your monthly, you haven't hit the lowest moving average that I've got on here, which is the 20. You haven't hit that since 2020, since the move started. Okay, And it, you'll know, if you follow me, price always returns to these MAs at some point. Okay, It always does. It has to. They act as magnets for price, and the MAs always catch up.
the price comes down and catches up with them. So again, your monthly, you can see you've got support here. This is probably going to be the earliest point of rejection. And I would say at some point you're likely to pull down in the future, but you've got to be able to manage this because there are people who think, okay, well, the stochastic oscillator is high. There's no way this could go any further. But just look, learn the lesson now for the future. Look how long the stock has been high or whatever you're trading. It's been high for ages, hasn't it? It hasn't, it's hardly even came down since the start of the move. So you've got to remember that it doesn't matter if the stochastic oscillator is high, it can still get higher. So don't be fooled now thinking, you know what? It looks short. Yes, I agree, Will. Um, don't slam into the market. Don't look to make millions on the trade. All you want to do is gradually spread out your entries. Okay, you might have one here and then spread it out massively to there and then up here. You do not need to rush in at all. You really don't. And in between that, you can use loss mitigation methods to keep yourself going. That is how you trade phenomenal rallies that just keep going up and up because the yens are very sentiment driven. If you look at things as well, like the Swiss franc, which members ask me about a lot, um, Pairs against the Swiss franc, okay, so dollar Swiss franc, um, the CAD Swiss franc, the odd Swiss franc, the pound Swiss franc, you can see the Swiss franc has gained value for such a long period of time, and it tends to do it. It is a currency that tends to do that. So if you're trading the yens, you need to understand that inherently it's a currency that has long drifting markets, okay? It can go for a very long period of time in one way. You don't often get it as far with the euro, the pound, etc., but with the yen, you do. Okay, because they like their currency to be valued in a very certain way. And that's the fundamental knowledge you need to, to trade currency pairs like this. Because if you don't understand that, you won't be wary of the extreme long-term move that could occur, and you'll probably over-leverage because of it. Okay, and over-leveraging in an FX market is not good, because FX prices can trend for a very long time, as you've seen. I mean, you could even say that the trend started in the millennium because you haven't had a lower low since then of, of this, okay? You've just gone up and up and up. But this really is extreme. This is far too steep for my liking. And I would say it's likely at some point you are gonna come back. But in the meantime, you'll just have to use DCA methods. Remember, you don't know exactly where it's gonna stop, but you don't need to know that information. To make money, you don't need to know when the price is gonna end or stop moving. You just need to be able to survive the move. You've got to be able to go from here to there without liquidating. That is what makes someone a profitable trader in general. You've got to be able to survive those market moves. So when the market does eventually come back, I'll have long orders in line with a return to this key moving average here, this 20 early key moving average, and also a return to early support, because I can see that it's quite fair to say there would be buy side rejection over here. That's why you get the little bump in price. That's why you get the candle wick. If you look just here, you got exactly the same thing. That's why you bounced away and that's why it made a great hedge zone for such a long period of time. So generally, my bias remains short as you get higher. All you need to do is drop your size and space those short entries out because the longer this market drifts, the more you're going to have to be able to cope with the move. And if you cannot cope with the long-term move, you cannot cope with that long-term marking sentiment dragging these yen pairs higher and higher and higher because of the fundamental aspects of the market, you will find trading gets very hard and you'll find that the further you get away from MAs, you're not interested whether it'll come back or not because you, um, you're you just underwater. So be very careful with that, guys. Make sure at all times you're managing risk. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to get my free training underneath. See you in the next one.